So when ATF mandated that bump stocks be turned in or destroyed, what did the American public do? Did they turn in their bump stocks to the ATF? No, they did not. On January 31st, 2023, the ATF published their final rule regarding pistol braces to the Federal Register. The rule, Factoring Criteria for Firearms with Attached Stabilizing Braces, essentially amends the definition of rifle to include a brace. For those unfamiliar with firearms law, what this means is the ATF can then classify all pistol brace firearms with barrels under 16 inches as short barreled rifles, or SBRs, which are regulated by the National Firearms Act, or the NFA. Owners of these firearms now face a choice. Destroy their firearms, or at least the brace, register them with the ATF as SBRs, or turn them in. This rule essentially functions as a massive registration scheme for pistol brace firearms, and the ATF is very aware of this fact. Unsurprisingly, the ATF is no stranger to using existing federal laws to create regulations, subverting the legislative process. They used a similar method in 2018 to ban bump stocks. How did they do that exactly? Well, let me explain. ATF, after determining that bump stocks were not machine guns on many separate occasions, changed their minds under the direction from the Trump administration and reclassified bump stocks as machine guns. By doing so, they regulated bump stocks under the NFA, which banned all machine guns produced after 1986. Since no bump stocks were produced prior to 1986, this rule change resulted as a de facto ban on all bump stocks. This method of banning what was effectively a range toy opened up a floodgates for potential ATF overreach. As President Trump and Biden found, they could use their regulatory authority to subvert Congress and govern exclusively by executive fiat, having federal agencies like ATF essentially create laws through regulatory rulemaking. Now the ATF has taken a drastic step of reclassifying pistol braces. The difference here though, is while estimates of bump stock ownership amounted to around 520,000, estimates of pistol brace ownership is estimated to be between 10 and 40 million. So when ATF mandated that bump stocks be turned in or destroyed, what did the American public do? Did they turn in their bump stocks to the ATF? No, they did not. In fact, according to ATF themselves, only 0.105% of bump stocks in circulation were ever turned in. That amounts to about 546 out of the total 520,000. Should ATF expect the same for pistol brace firearms? Only time will tell. But if the bump stock ban was any indication, gun owners don't seem too keen on turning in their firearms to the federal government. And who can blame them? The ATF hasn't exactly been forthcoming or consistent in their rulemaking process. Just recently, ATF stated in court that their recent definition of frame or receiver rule allows companies to sell pistol frame blanks without background checks, as long as those frames do not include jigs and tools to manufacture into firearms. Then, months later, ATF issued an open letter reversing their position and classifying these same frames as firearms. Aiden Johnston, Director of Federal Affairs for Gun Owners America had this to say, the ATF is not a legislative body and they are playing with people's lives and livelihoods with their thoughtlessness and draconian rules. And that's why GOA will be attacking this rule from every angle, legally, legislatively, and administratively. GOA has a history of overturning these unconstitutional rule changes. In 2020, when the ATF under the Trump administration attempted to regulate pistol braces, GOA rallied our members to take action. GOA members flooded the proposed rule with comments. Because of this, ATF abandoned their attempt and withdrew the rulemaking. While GOA is taking the ATF to court over this issue, we're also interested in cutting the ATF's ability to regulate short-barreled rifles, short-barreled shotguns, and any other weapons. To strip the ATF of their ability to regulate these types of firearms, we're targeting the core of the issue, the National Firearms Act. The outdated and unconstitutional NFA allows ATF the leeway to make these sorts of unconstitutional rule changes. That's why we're working with Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas and Congressman Andrew Clyde of Georgia to pass the SHORT Act, which would remove short-barreled rifles, short-barreled shotguns, and any other weapons from the NFA. But we can't do it alone. We need your help fighting back against this rogue ATF and the anti-gun Biden administration. Help us fight by calling your senators and congressmen and asking them to support the SHORT Act and the joint resolution of disapproval. Please consider becoming a member or donating to Gun Owners Foundation's Legal Action Fund. You can find that at gunowners.com slash donate. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.